Hello biology students. Today we're going to be doing a meiosis advance, more details, specifically the steps of meiosis and comparing it to mitosis. Alrighty, don't forget all those new words we learned last time. So when we do this, we're going to really be starting by looking at the steps or the phases of meiosis. Before we do that, let's realize that before meiosis occurs, what must happen to the cell's DNA? This is going to be a lot like mitosis. The cell's DNA needs to replicate. And we know DNA synthesis or replication happens during interphase. After interphase, we're going to have meiosis. But meiosis is different than mitosis. Specifically, one of the biggest differences is it's going to have two rounds, two rounds of cell division. We know cell division is going from prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So two whole cycles of PMAT and then PMAT again. So we'll have interphase going from having one butterfly wing to having two butterfly wings and then it'll go through two rounds of PMAT. All right, let's get going. Okay, so before we jump into looking at all the phases at once, we're going to zoom into the first part of PMAT, which is going to be prophase one. That's the first time prophase occurs, since prophase is going to occur twice. There's going to be a really specific, special thing that happens in this first round of prophase. It is going to be the fact that homologous chromosomes are going to pair up, and they're going to exchange genetic information. So I would actually draw prophase 1 here. We can see just like normal, we have centriole shooting out spindle fibers. Just like normal prophase, we have the nuclear membrane beginning to dissolve. But here we have our chromosomes that are alike, our homologous chromosomes that are of same size and similar genes from mom and dad. They're doing footsie. They're almost overlapping the feet of the X's and they are exchanging genetic information. This is usually pictured as having the colors actually swap, like sw sock swapping on the chromosomes. I suggest you use colors to draw that actual swap of genetic information as you define crossing over. So again, crossing over, super important, and it happens the first time prophase occurs. So now we're gonna zoom out and really look at the first half of meiosis which includes this prophase part one. So we're gonna ask that after you did that, you don't have to redraw prophase one. You are gonna to wanna to do simple drawings of each part of meiosis. Notice that meiosis one is all PMAT and those same exact words, prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one. Here we've labeled if the chromosomes are still considered diploid or haploid. We consider this diploid because there's a copy of mom and dad chromosomes. They're still homologous, all right? Just like normal metaphase, they're meeting in the middle, except here there are the homologous chromosomes are aligning, right? We have the homologous chromosomes aligning because they're going to be separating out in anaphase. In mitosis, they were all kind of individual. They're not paired up like this. Here we have the spindle fibers grabbing apart in anaphase. And again in telophase, we are beginning to pinch into two, reforming our nuclear membrane. At the end of an, uh, telophase, we now have our homologous chromosomes separated. So by now, we only have one copy of the big one and one copy of the little one. We have half of the original amount. We are now considered haploid by the time we're at telophase 1. Alrighty, get ready to do the next set of drawings. Now draw mitosis, meiosis 2. So you might need to pause here. Again, we have prophase through metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. PMAT all the way through. We are still haploid all the way through. We call them all number 2 because this is our second round of doing PMAT. But what we can see is it's the same exact type of things. We have in prophase the nuclear membranes dissolving. In metaphase, we have them meeting in the middle. In metaphase, we have right here, those centromeres are still intact. And here, we have the centromeres broken, and the two halves of the chromosome, called sister chromatids, are breaking apart. Here, by telophase, we have the halves, the sister chromatids. 
All right, they are going to be in the different cells. Notice that the total number of cells at the end of meiosis is much different than mitosis. We now have four non-identical haploid daughter cells. All right, so what does that mean? If I look here, none of the exact coloring is the same for any of the combinations of the big chromosome and the little chromosome. That's why we call it non-identical, because they're genetically unique, each of these four daughter cells. So if you need more time to color, I would. I would try my best to try to color the blue and the green different. You don't need to use blue and green exactly, but you should have some solid drawings here. Let's keep it going. So to summarize, at the end of meiosis, we have four genetically unique haploid daughter cells. Okay, this is very different than mitosis, very different, right? And again, genetically unique was referring to the fact that the different genes, because of the swapping during crossing over, causes us to have some slight variation in each of our four daughter cells. Haploid because we only have one copy of each type of chromosome. And again, just to remind us that this is the process of making sperm or egg for fertilization to be able to correctly make 46 chromosomes afterwards. So we call this making gametes. So this was making four sex cells or four sperm or four gametes. Just to make a note for later in the year, there are some advantages to doing meiosis, which is a type of sexual reproduction, and that was because meiosis made genetically unique cells. Some of the places genetic variation can occur or the ways that we had the crossing over. The, another way genetic variation can occur is the way that the chromosomes align during metaphase one. Sometimes the chromosomes will align where all of the daddy chromosomes will be on one side and all the mommy chromosomes on the other. That would make the following end results. But notice here that the mommy and the daddy chromosomes are alternating which one is starting on which side. And that made totally different combinations. And that's only with four beginning chromosomes or two beginning pairs. Remember, we as humans have how many homologous pairs? 23. So the way the mommy and the daddy chromosomes orient themselves during metaphase can really make some cool genetic variation on top of the fact that we have crossing over. Last but not least, we have to overall compare my, mitosis and meiosis through the following chart that you should create and try to fill in on your own. What was the number of divisions in mitosis versus meiosis? What was the number of end resulting daughter cells in mitosis versus meiosis? Which one made end results that were genetically identical and which one made end results that were genetically unique or different? And which one had end results that were haploid and which one made end results that were diploid? So take a moment here to pause, make your chart and fill it in. And then when you're ready, unpause and check over your answers. This is our last slide. Alrighty, let's go over the answers. So for number of divisions, mitosis only had one round of PMAT versus meiosis had two. For the number of end result daughter cells, mitosis makes two daughter cells and meiosis makes four. We know that mitosis makes genetically identical cells and meiosis made totally genetically unique cells, which we just learned in some ways is advantageous when we think about sexual reproduction. And we know that mitosis is making body cells, which have to be diploid for humans, that's 46. And for meiosis, they are making gametes, which are sex cells, which have to be half the normal amount, haploid. Wonderful job. You made it through advanced meiosis. Hopefully you made some good drawings. I will see you in class and we will practice, practice, practice.